the Romans did that to the Jews because they wanted to beat them down and so demoralize them that they wanted them to no longer think of themselves as an individual people. And so ironically, even the phrase Palestinian is wrought with anti-Semitism and was from its very origin. The whole purpose of that word existing is to try to dehumanize the Jews and treat them as though they are not a distinct ethnic group. I didn't touch anything, I swear! Oh, Ty, what did you do? It wasn't my fault! All right, and welcome back, folks. Thanks so much for being with us here. It's been a while since we've done a Breaking the Internet, but I'm really looking forward to this one. So this is one that was making the rounds, and there's a thousand like this. And again, we're going to be staying on the same topic of Israel. There's a thousand different graphics like this. I'm just kind of using this one as more of a placeholder than anything else. But just to kind of give you an idea, this is the kind of thing that we're dealing with. I saw this the other day, and for those of you that may only be listening on the audio version of the podcast, the graphic has a picture of England crossed out, and it has the word Rome written over the island of England. And it says, this territory below is now Rome. No, this is not a mistake. The Romans occupied England for 366 years, 43 AD to 409 AD, and therefore they have a historic claim to it, and it is now Rome. The region of Jupiter has been has proclaimed it so. Sorry, the religion of Jupiter is, has proclaimed it so. Anyone who claims Roman descent can now come here, evict your family, and move into your house. Don't like this logic? Now you know what it feels like to be a Palestinian. So there's a lot wrong with this one, both historically and from an argumentative standpoint. But I want to go ahead and give a disclaimer here. Because there's, like I said, there's so much wrong with that, and we're going to go through each and every one of those points. But I want to go ahead and give a disclaimer before we start with anything that the truth is, I actually kind of agree with the overall premise of this graphic. I know that may surprise you, especially since I'm doing a breaking the internet. I actually agree that the idea that we're supposed to just try to figure out and do all this kind of complicated historic math and figure out which nation or which people has a historic claim to a specific spot of land is supposed to be the people that are allowed to live there, that's a dumb thing. That's an incredibly stupid idea. That's something that is not going to benefit anybody. And it's also important to note that when we're going through something like that, uh, when we're trying to figure those things out, nobody's ever going to come out on top of that. You hear a similar argument being made all the time where they're like, oh, well, the Americans, they colonized everybody and they went in and they took over the land. And now we should just give all that land back to the Native Americans. First of all, never met an American that said that that was willing to give up their own house or their own land to the Native Americans to do so. So there's that right there. But on top of that, then you'd have to ask, OK, what tribe? Because the Native Americans, which, by the way, I have a little bit of a Native American blood in me, so I'm not even completely, like, divorced from that conversation. Most people in the South do because there were so many Native Americans here. A lot of us intermarried. Um, but when you make that argument, that argument doesn't make a ton of sense because you've got the Apache, the Comanche, the Iroquois. There's, I mean, just tons of them. The Sioux Indians, the Plains Indians, the Creek Indians. There's all these different tribes, and they fought and killed each other a lot to try to determine who was going to win that land. So which tribe do you give the land back to? I mean, is this Blackfoot territory or is this Iroquois territory? We don't know because they both owned the land at some point. If you're going to strictly hold to the idea of only people that have a historic claim to the land are allowed to live there, all of us are going to be living in a very, very tiny area between the Tigris and Euphrates River. That's just the reality of the thing. Conquest is the history of the human race. And it's impossible to sort out whose land it was first or who really deserves it. Or let's just say that you actually did do something terrible. And there's a house and you took over this house and you 
basically took over somebody's land. And then a hundred years later, your great, great, great grandson, uh, who is still in that house, some dude that's the great, great, great ancestor of the guy you kicked out of that house says you have to move now. Well, that's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. And your family's been there for decades now. That doesn't justify the initial action, even if there was, you know, some kind of foul play. Whether that's the case or not, it's really impossible to sort that out generations later. And that's kind of the same position that we find ourselves in right now. So ultimately, I just don't believe that the historic claim to a land is a good way of determining who's supposed to be there in the first place. So I reject the premise outright. However, since they're wanting to play this game, let's actually look at what group of people does have a historic claim to the land known as Israel. So let's look at a little bit of history. Biblical is Israel. So the, the people chosen by God, whose land was established by God when the promised land was given to them in the days of Abraham, that was promised. Uh, the days of Moses, it was fulfilled. Or sorry, in the days of Moses, that was brought to fruition when God takes them out of Egypt. And then it's fulfilled in the days of Joshua. And it comes to its ultimate fulfillment in the days of David and Solomon, where the kingdom of Israel is at its peak. The All of the land that was promised to them actually belonged to them during their reigns. And then that broke down when the kingdoms divided. But regardless, that's the history of Israel. But if you're looking at biblical Israel, that was destroyed in about 70 AD. And the reason for that is the Roman Empire went in, sacked the city of Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. That's why the temple has not been rebuilt to this day is because they destroyed it back in 70 AD. Uh, so after the time of Christ, only about a generation after the time of Christ, the kingdom of Israel as a physical state was completely destroyed and decimated. There were still Jews living in that region, but the kingdom of Israel ceased to exist as a geopolitical entity from that day forward, and it's never really recovered uh, up until the point that you have modern Israel, and even that's somewhat debatable if, if that's the same state, and that's what we're about to talk about. So modern Israel was founded by the Brits in World War II in 1948. So we're talking about an almost thousand-year gap. It's about 1,800 years. Uh, so there's a really, really big gap between that. And not only do you not have the same people occupying it, there's even question about after that many generations of intermarrying with other people, if you can even be considered the same ethnic group. Now, especially if you're looking at like Moroccan Jews and, and people of that ilk, they probably are a lot closer genetically to ancient Israel than the, the more modern Jews that went all throughout Europe are. But really, that's neither here nor there. They all do share Jewish blood. They really are the descendants of Abraham. They share Abraham's blood, which is the big qualifier as to whether or not you're considered Jewish. Uh, but ultimately, that modern state of Israel, it was not established by God or promised by God the way that biblical Israel was. It is not a theocracy. They are a secular democracy. And you can agree with that, disagree with that, not like it, but it's the truth. I mean, they don't operate the way that the Torah commands them to operate. They don't, they never reestablish the temple. They don't offer live sacrifices. They're not adhering to every letter of the Torah. They're not a theocracy the way that the Bible demands that they be. They are a secular democracy. Yes, occupied by Jews, but it's not the nation of Israel as we see it in the Bible. There's no Davidic kingship over Israel as we know right now. And in fact, both the Davidic and the Aaronic lines are broken. That's very important because when God promised a kingship to David, he did so and that that was going to be in perpetuity. So from then on, there would always be a king after David's lineage. Now, in the time of Jesus, that was fulfilled in the sense that Jesus has been reigning there ever since his death and resurrection, and he's been reigning over his people, just not the Jews proper or the, the physical Jews, as it were. Uh, but ultimately, so that's where you have that. But the actual Davidic line of a physical king sitting on David's throne, that doesn't exist anymore. The Aaronic line, um, the descendants of Aaron, who are supposed to be the only people that are allowed to be high priest, that was broken even before the time of, the, of Jesus. So in the time of Jesus, you have high priests like Anaphis and Caiaphas. Uh, and, and so by that point, even then you didn't have high priests that were in the line of Aaron. And so they already were not fulfilling the law of Moses, even by the time Jesus comes around. 
So they have no king, they have no high priest, Israel is not a theocracy, and as we discussed earlier, there is no covenant that God would return them after the, uh, the initial return after the Babylonian exile. And so ultimately, what we're looking at now is not the kingdom of Israel the way that the Bible describes it. But let's look at Israel as a geopolitical entity and see if there is some kind of historic claim to the land. So uh, I wanted to put together a really cool graphic, but unfortunately there was no way to fit all of this on one screen. So I'm going to just kind of have to read it off to you. Um, before the conquest, so before, after the Exodus, but before the conquest of Israel, Israel did not exist as a physical nation with a actual land that they were on. They were a physical nation in the sense that they had exited from Egypt, but they weren't, they were nomads at that point. They didn't have a homeland. So before the conquest, that would have been about 400 or sorry, 147 BC. So 1407 BC, about 1400 years before Jesus is born. That land was ruled by varying tribes of Canaanites. So there's not one particular land. Israel is not one people or one nation. There's a bunch of different tribes of Canaanites, the uh, Prezerites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, all of those different tribes sort of take turns and they periodically take over parts of the land, kind of like the Native Americans before the Americans came. They weren't a united land before that point. Then you have the period of judges after the conquest in 1407. And after the land is established as being part of Israel, uh, you have the period of the judges between 1320 and 1020 BC. So uh, that's about 200-ish years where the period of judges are there. And that leads to the kingdom of Israel, which occurs from 1020, which is about the time that Saul would have been coronated as king, up until about 597 BC, where the Babylonians uh, take over the southern kingdom. So you have Assyria conquering the northern kingdom in 721 BC. Then you have the Babylonians conquering the southern kingdom, or Judea, the, the, uh, the descendants of Judah in that tribe. Uh, that happens in 597 BC, as we already stated. Or sorry, um, 527. 597 was, um, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Again, this is why I need a graphic. Uh, Babylon conquers the southern kingdom in 597. They return in 527, which is exactly 70 years later, as the Bible predicts. Uh, and then you have the Alexander the Great conquering Israel in 329 BC. So after they come back from the exile, they're then under the auspices of the Greek Empire when Alexander the Great conquers them in 329. Then the Greek Empire is divided into four different parts in 323. And Israel is ruled by the Ptolemies. So the Ptolemies were one of the four sections that the empire was divided off into. And Ptolemy is the one that then rules them. But they're still technically part of the Greek Empire, just not the United Greek Empire at that point. Uh, after the Roman Emperor Pompey conquers Jerusalem in 663 uh, BC, then Jews and the Jewish people are under the auspices of the Roman Empire. That sets the stage for the time of Christ. And then the Persians take Israel as the Roman Empire crumbles about AD 614. So the Persians are in charge of it then. The Byzantine Empire, which by the way is just sort of an outgrowth of the Greek Empire at this point. The Byzantine Empire recaptures Jerusalem in AD 629. Then Muslim forces capture Jerusalem in AD 638. So it wasn't long afterward, just nine years uh, after then the, the Muslims actually capture Jerusalem. By the way, that is six years after Muhammad dies. So the Muslims do control Jerusalem, but they never do while Muhammad is alive. It's only six years after he dies that the Muslims take control of the, uh, is, uh, of the state of Israel and Jerusalem. Then Europe, uh, European crusaders take control of Jerusalem about 1099. The Egyptian Sultan Saladin captures Jerusalem in AD 1187. Then the Ottoman Empire conquers Israel in 1517. Then the British take over the Ottoman territories in AD 1917. And finally, the League of Nations appoint Britain as administrator of the land in 1922. And of course, that culminates in the British Empire giving the land to the Jews as a modern state of Israel in 1948. So I know that that was an awful lot of history. I mean, we literally covered what? We started in 1407, so... That's what, 3,470 or something like that. A uh, little bit more than that. Um, we covered an 
awful lot of history of the land of Israel, but that means we have roughly, let's see, that is at least 12 different owners of the land of Israel in Israel's history. But did you notice who was conspicuously absent from that list? Anybody? Palestinians. At no point anywhere in human history has there ever been a people or a nation known as Palestine. That is an inconvenient truth for the people who do not like Israel being there, but it is true. The Palestinians never owned the land of Israel at any point in their history. In fact, there's no such thing as Palestinians. They do not exist as a distinct ethnic group. They just don't. There have been various tribes of Muslims that took over the land at one point or another, but you'll notice there that of all the different people that procured Israel over a period of time, not a single one claimed it as a homeland. It was always some far off empire that took control of Israel. It was never their homeland. You know, Israel is not the home of Rome. Israel is not the home of the Greeks. Israel is not the home of the Ottoman Empire. It just isn't. It's not their homeland. That doesn't mean they didn't really control it. But if you're asking what nation has a historic claim to the land of Israel, there's only one. There's only one that has ever claimed Israel as its homeland, and it's the Jews. Now, we just went over an entire hour where I explained how I don't believe the Jews are actually God's people anymore. I believe that their purpose was fulfilled in the culmination of the Messiah coming to save mankind. I believe all that, and due to this day, I have no religious reason whatsoever for believing that Israel has a historic claim to this land. But if you're looking through the history and asking yourself, which group of people claims this land is their homeland? There's only one group of people that you can say that about Israel, and it's the Jews. All the other different people that claimed it over the centuries and centuries of history we went over, they were all outsiders that claimed it as a territory. They never actually owned it as a homeland for themselves. And that's just something that is true if you're looking at the historic record doesn't mean there weren't people that were living in there that were not Jewish. I mean, to this day, about 20% of Israel's population are Muslim Arabs. That doesn't change the fact that that's not their homeland. It's fine that they're there, and Israel's fine with them being there as long as they're peaceful. And much of them are. If they thought that they weren't, they would have gotten rid of them. But my point in all of that is there's not a single other group of people in all of that history that ever claimed Israel as its homeland. So if you're asking that, it's like, well, if that's the case, Caleb, how on earth did the Palestinians even come to be? Where did they come from? Who are they? So I'll actually go over the origin story of that. After quelling a Jewish uprising in AD 135, Rome renamed the region Syria Palestinia. This is a name in Latin that is a transliteration of the Hebrew uh, Yudaha, meaning Philistine. Now, the Philistine people don't exist anymore. They've been wiped out for almost 2,000 years. They've long since been extinct. So why did Rome call them Philistines? That's what Palestinian means. It's a transliteration of the word Philistine. They did it as an insult. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Code Geass, but it's a alternate reality, and it happens in the not super distant future. It's like the year 2300 or something like that. Uh, so, you know, about a couple centuries into the future from where we are now. 2200, 2300, something like that. Anyway, so they have a world where there's only three governments left. So everything is under the auspices of one of these three empires. One of them is the British Empire, and it takes over the region of Japan. And when they do so, they cease to call it Japan. They call it District 11. And they refer to the Japanese people not as Japanese, but as 11s. It's a dehumanizing tactic. They do so specifically to rip people of their identity. And so they do exactly the same thing. A lot of people don't realize this, and I didn't realize it until I started going to Ukraine. Ukrainians just refer to themselves as Ukrainians, and they just refer to their country as Ukraine. It's not the Ukraine. The reason that some people refer to it as the Ukraine, and again, I'm not saying that everybody that does that, because I used to do it, was doing so through some kind of malice. It was just ignorance. 
the reason that people started doing that is because the Russians started that trend because they wanted people to think of the Ukraine as like in America, we call it the South, not an actual distinct designated area where there's a distinct group of people, but just another part, basically a, a vestigial organ of the Roman Empire. That's how they wanted people to perceive it. It's just just another part of the USSR. And that's why they started calling it as the Ukraine instead of Ukraine. They didn't see it as an individual nation. In the same way the British did not see the Japanese as an individual nation in that fictional story I just said. And that's exactly what's going on here. The Romans did that to the Jews because they wanted to beat them down and so demoralize them that they wanted them to no longer think of themselves as an individual people. And so ironically, even the phrase Palestinian is wrought with anti-Semitism and was from its very origin. The whole purpose of that word existing is to try to dehumanize the Jews and treat them as though they are not a distinct ethnic group. That was always the purpose of it. And so because of that, that's where you get the word Palestinian. And ironically, if you know that and understand it, uh, you, if you also know the history that Roman did, Rome did not even very specifically talk about the kingdom of Israel or the region of Israel as Palestinia. They used it to refer to basically the entire area. So again, it's like the South or the Northeast or the Mountain West. The way that they use that term, again, because it's demoralizing, is they treated it as just sort of a generic term for the region, the region where the Philistines used to live which is sort of all over. It's, it's Israel, but there's also certain things that are not Israel, like Jordan and parts of Egypt and all kinds of other stuff. And so the origin word of, of Palestine is even anti-Semitic in and of itself. And so ultimately they artificially wanted to alienate the Jews from their homeland, and that's the reason that that exists. And the Palestinians per se, they're not a specific or distinct group of people. They never have been, they never will be. That's just a word that was made up. And the thing is, the Palestinians are not even a single group to this very day. They're still made up of several different diverse tribes. They're not even one people even now. And so the idea that the Palestinians have some historic right to the land, they don't have a historic right to any land because they're not even an actual people. Now, that doesn't mean that the people that are re referred to as Palestinians in the modern day are not human, doesn't mean that we shouldn't care about them, doesn't mean that they need a place to live too, and all of those things. Now, the ones that have sided with Hamas, I think that they forfeited their right to live a long time ago, but that's really not the point of what we're talking about now. I'm not saying that the people in the region known as Palestine are insignificant and uh, should not be... Um, should not have any consideration given for them. I am merely suggesting and stating outright that really ultimately what this boils down to is that there is no reason uh, for this sort of historic claim to be there. So there is no real historic claim as people have claimed it to the land of Israel and, and calling it Palestine. That just simply doesn't exist and never has. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take another quick break. Um, again, I, I do think the historic argument is stupid, but if that is your standard, then it's very clear who is actually supposed to be the historic inheritor of the land of Israel. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, woke brigade?